you know, having been invited to do this, I kept thinking about over and over again was what does collective mean? And what does collective mean in relation to something like collaboration? And I think the ways in which you interact, the ways in which people encounter one another and the ways in which things are authored are very much different in different forms. So what, you know, is there a sort of sliding scale between collaboration at one end and collectives at the other? Mm -hmm. Can we use them synonymously? Mm. I don't know. Can we talk about collectives in the same way now as mm. you might do when referring to the 1880s? When we look at the work of some of the people included in the Modern Scottish Women exhibition, you're talking about just a handful of people for, in some cases. So, for example, this cluster of people working in Kirkubri, working on paintings and book illustration and things like that. It was quite a defined field. Mm. Whereas I think if we would look at more kind of recent um, collectives, like specifically in Glasgow, obviously there's some sort of women-only collectives like Elizabeth Go or um, the group Muscles of Joy or groups like Poster Club where it's a, mm. it's a mixed group. It's, it's a strategy that people mm. have that they know how to deploy now, mm -hmm. whereas more in the, the things like the 1920s and 1930s it might have only been a few people that had A, the financial resources um, and B, just the the mind frame to think, oh, this could yeah. be something that we could do. Mm. What, what was it that sort of brought you towards wanting to work collaboratively? Poster Club is kind of an interesting example because we've been working together for six years now. You can work through things with other people in a way that is quite challenging. So it's a very different kind of challenge from sitting in your studio mm. alone and trying to work through things. And I think in a way we've come to a point where we actually understand Poster Club's collaborative, collective voice it has an attitude that is outside of each one of us individually and there's something really exciting about that that like sharing an authorship mm. with other people and producing something you wouldn't alone and being able to have sort of stand back from it in a slightly different way than you do from your own work yeah well for me personally one of the most interesting people included in the modern scottish women exhibition is margaret morris i do think that when you quite often look at creative scenes it only takes like one or two really inspiring people to kind of then set off a group of other people so when mm. margaret morris comes to um glasgow she's immediately like well i'm going to set up an, an open access art club the new art club that men and women can come to mm. and I'll also establish my own theatre company and then a few years later I'll establish my own ballet company and was very much like okay what's missing in this situation we need places where people can gather together mm. and discuss ideas and and sort of share that kind of knowledge and uh, I think in Glasgow there's been a few people that have been quite noticeable like that I think Adele Patrick yeah. and Sue John at Glasgow Women's Library have been very inspiring figures and partly because they've campaigned very hard to get this space where people could come yeah you need that room yeah where the people can get together one thing that's happened that's really interesting particularly in Glasgow and Edinburgh in recent years has been um, the rise of like reading groups mm -hmm. um, around you know around this idea of like, women working collectively or women artists working collectively you know, you've had in the last couple of years, Sick 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 and um, other feminist readers in Glasgow. There's the Social Reproduction Reading Group in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. And they're sort of playing around with this model of how, what it means to work collectively. Mm -hmm. You're not working collectively on a particular project in order to make something, mm -hmm. but it's a sort of shared, what you said, this kind of pooling of resources. To me, the moment when it's really, something is at stake is when you're face to face with other people. Mm. And for me, as somebody who makes things, that's through a process of making something together. Mm. That's when things are feel like there's something, there's like a rub, <laughs> or there's a kind of friction that can can generate something interesting. I curated an exhibition in 2012 called Studio 58: Women Artists in Glasgow Since World War II, which looked at that kind of slightly uncharted territory of women artists and how they work in different fields but going forward from that I've tended more to work it with mixed groups but I do always try to keep an eye on yeah. how many men and how many women there are so maybe that would be something to, interesting to talk about like whether you think women only exhibitions have an important role to play or whether it's just the case that it, it's more productive now just for us to ensure that there's an equal representation. I feel like I have the Gorilla Girls to thank for my sort of awareness mm -hmm. of that, sort of really mm -hmm. targeting specific institutions and not being afraid to talk about percentages and, and having a sense of humour whilst doing it. Um, even as a student when I learned about their 
work that's in a way that's kind of stayed with me for years yeah. and always kind of keeping an eye on who's represented where and why and mm. kind of troubling thing with the gorilla girls was that they were doing all of this stuff in the 1980s mm. then in the 1990s the museums that they were attacking started collecting their work mm. <laughs> and then 10 years later they they were you know the gorilla girls went back and redid all the statistics and nothing had changed mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so, we've got the Gorilla Girls. <laughs> yeah, oh, and it's fine, you know, we've got the Gorilla Girls. Look, we're aware of our problematic past, <laughs> but not necessarily doing anything to change that in the future. Mm -hmm. Susan Hiller used to always you know, say that she didn't want to be described as a woman artist or a mm -hmm. feminist artist, because she said that as soon as you put some prefix on something like community artist, outsider artist, yeah. women artist, she was just like, I just want to be considered an artist. Yeah. I don't want to be just, you know, framed in this way. Mm -hmm. And and the fact that it's still kind of like cause for kind of debate shows that we haven't quite got there no, yet. Definitely not. <laughs> but we will. <laughs> yeah.